My name is Blesom Denge, and I'm from Denge, BC, and I'll be your host for this afternoon. Thank you to everyone joining us, and I can see a lot of familiar faces joining us. Shout out to Kumbi, who was our panelist for the last webinar we had, we had um, a few weeks ago. Just a few housekeeping issues before we start our discussion for this afternoon. For those who are joining us, may I please ask you to mute your microphones and then you can unmute when you want to make a contribution or when you want to ask a question. In terms of the structure of our discussion this afternoon, it, it will be a one hour long discussion split into the first 30 to 40 minutes will be our main discussion and then the last part of our question and answer segment. And today we'll allow you to ask questions directly to our panelists that are before us. If I was to ask any one of you who has joined this call to step out of the room and probably just greet a colleague or maybe a friend out there, you will invariably hear you know, this phrase, 2020 out of here. <laughs> and the response would be, ah, fuck are you. Indeed, 2020 has gone in a blur. And I'm just reminded of a discussion I had, I think it was in early March, there about with my friend John. And he came to me and said, bless more. Have you ever seen how much waste happens, you know, especially to produce from farmers? If you are to go to your bottom seeker, you will see there's a lot of agriculture waste. And I said, oh yes, oh yes, you yeah, probably are onto something there. And he said to me, bless more. How about if I was to bring a solution? That will one, give farmers information which will allow them to plan their farming calendar well. And secondly, if I was to give them a solution which would preserve their produce and then release it into the market, especially when there is a lot of supply. And I said, no, that is a fantastic idea. And that was in early March. And then obviously we went on to lockdown and I was also busy. Then a week or so ago, I called him. John, how are you doing? I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been long. How is the project going? And he responded to me in two words. Bless more, COVID-19 happened. And indeed, COVID-19 happened, ladies and gentlemen. But as we say, the beat must go on. What does it mean for you if I run a business? What does it mean for you if I'm into the new? And to unpack this discussion this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we have got an accountant by training, a journalist by passion. I will not mention the team that he supports, even though I also support that team. <laughs> so, I just, so welcome to you. Can you please take away with us this afternoon? Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, my beloved Manchester United. Uh, a man after my own heart. I thought we were just about to end this webinar just now um, <laughs> if you supported the wrong team. <laughs> yes, no, I, uh, that's, that's my team. I've been a, a supporter for, for, for many, many years. Many, many years, yeah. But how are you, Doc? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me this, af this afternoon. Yeah, we're already in the afternoon. Yes. Uh, th th thank you for having me. So, um, so the idea what? Um, hang on a minute. So, bless more. Who's who's? Uh, so here we go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got my questions here. Um, so I guess what it is said that um, COVID has uh, brought about. Uh, and a new normal, um, a, a new normal, you know, what does it mean? Um, what does this new normal mean to you, uh, I guess, to the financial services uh, sector and to Bank ABC? Uh, uh, thanks, Nigel. And again, I just want to extend uh, uh, um, um, a warm welcome to everybody who is listening this afternoon. I see quite a lot of people and, and uh, uh, this is actually my first time to speak at the um, uh, Ignition Hub, as we call it. 
Okay. And, and um, I just wanted to, to, to retress and, and, and say that one of the reasons we do these sessions and why we established the Ignition Hub was just to uh, um, you know, support a confluence of ideas such as this, which is to talk through some of the issues that affect businesses and where we can uh, um, help and what we can do actually as Bank ABC to help entrepreneurs, small businesses that are looking for just a place to share ideas, to connect with markets, and also just have a little bit more access of um, uh, some of the things that we do as a financial institution. So I just wanted to uh, uh, say again, congratulations to the team that is um, running this uh, uh, project. Uh, bless more your team and uh, that is led by uh, Oliver. I see Oliver somewhere there. I just, just um, I wanted to acknowledge the great work that you are doing there and, and um, um, the rest of uh, the team that are supporting in the background, the marketing team, the business banking team, and uh, um, everybody at Bank ABC who has made this uh, project a spectacular success. Going back to your question, Nigel, and, and um, uh, uh, you uh, um, ask, uh, 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 what we are working in, and, and I, I've, I've uh, spoken in a number of sessions and I've said, when all this is uh, over and done, I think as, as humanity and as uh, businesses, as countries, as presidents, we're going to reflect on how we have responded to this pandemic and we are either going to be, uh, to be kicking ourselves in the foot or we're going to say that we uh, did a spectacular intervention that saved lives, that also saved jobs. But this thing here, as far as I'm concerned, this pandemic uh, is not only affecting us, as you know, it's affecting uh, um, everybody globally, businesses globally, and it's also affecting a lot of SMEs, I believe, the hardest. Uh, the, the, the new normal uh, uh, for me is, um, you can look at it in two ways. You can look at it as uh, uh, um, the reset button that we all needed as, um, you know, uh, the world community, really just to look at ourselves, introspect, and do things just slightly differently than we have done them in the past. Or you can look at it as a disruption of your day to day. You can close yourself in a room somewhere and when you do so, you might wake up and you realize that you actually do not have a job. You don't have a business and that your, your, your business is closed forever. Uh, I, I am aware that many SMEs right now have closed their doors and might not open their doors because they just do not have the capacity of sustaining their businesses on an ongoing basis. I was um, reading an analysis by McKinsey that said, and I'm assuming that that applies to Zimbabwe as well, that says that any SME that exists in any market usually does not have enough funding or sustainability for them to keep their doors open for a period of five to six months if they do not have a regular income that is coming in through the door. So those are some of the realities that we have to face in that businesses are struggling. Uh, we, we have a greater uh, imperative, of course, that we need to protect lives. But in the process of protecting lives, we are also mindful of the fact that there has been an intolerable, um, you know, damage that has also been done to economies all over the world. Zimbabwe, the worst, because we're coming from a point where our economy had already struggled in many, many uh, um, uh, instances. But the thing is, we need to make sure that we are responding to what we are seeing and also uh, recalibrating our businesses so that we are adapting to what you call the new normal. And how we do so determines as far as I'm concerned, either uh, um, uh, uh, you know, whether we survive as businesses, as humanity actually, uh, um, or we are going to perish into oblivion. That, 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 that's uh, uh, how I'll put it. If I had put to you, Nigel, that uh, prior to 20, uh, 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 when did we have uh, September 11? That yeah. all of us were going to be taking off our shoes yeah. and we're going to be taking off our clothes before we go into an airport terminal. You'd have laughed at me. But if that is the new reality that we have had to live with right now, we've had to live with extra security going through all sorts of buildings because that has now become the new reality. But we now look at it as you know, a normal course of going through an airport. But before September 11, that was not the reality. So we're working in an exactly the same uh, um, in a scenario in which the new normal is actually defined by how we are going to relate to each other as human beings and how we are going to you know, uh, interact with our customers, how we're going to deliver our products, our services, how we're we going to deliver banking, how are you going to deliver you know, uh, news, how, do, how are you going to meet, how are you going to do uh, many other things. I, I, I was on another session yesterday 
and I made the, 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 the comment that before this, um, uh, uh, the lockdown started in um, uh, February, I used Zoom, but it wasn't my default for conducting a meeting. But as far as we're concerned now, the new normal is that uh, Zoom has turned into a verb. Zoom is a doing word now. Zoom means a meeting. So, so those are some of the conversions that we're seeing in as far as our mindset is concerned, in that we have to align ourselves to what we are seeing the changes or where we're seeing the changes going in as far as the configuration of um, uh, you know, the, the, the way that we do business is concerned. I mean, so as, as, as a business leader, I mean, because you've touched upon uh, some of these um, some of the points already, but I mean, how, as a business leader, how are you navigating this crisis? I mean, are you, are you sleeping much? Are you, you know, are you working harder? Are you working longer? Um, you know, how's it, what's it like to manage the team, for example? Extremely difficult, Nigel, and I, 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 I can tell you just um, from, from my experience and some of the things that we, we, we have done in that one of the, the difficulty that we have had uh, through the crisis is one, how to communicate as effectively as possible uh, uh, to your team that is panicking. Uh, all of us here are faced with the same, same reality, right? Because, you know, uh, uh, firstly, I'm, I, I'm a business leader, but I'm also a human being. And I need to be open with you in that uh, uh, Bank ABC found itself as the poster child of the, um, you know, uh, um, I'll say the, the, this, uh, the, this crisis from a corporate point of view, in that when this crisis started many, many months ago, in fact, before we had uh, uh, um, uh, um, the, the, the real scare that we had in this country, all of us know, was uh, what we're now popularly referring as to as uh, uh, patient two, who is unfortunately deceased now. But patient two was in my office, meeting with my team two days be before he got uh, diagnosed. So what, what we had to react to as Bank ABC was actually, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, having, you know, to deal with stakeholders, having to deal with panicking stuff, and also having to deal with my customers who then viewed the businesses as, as, as unsafe or as uh, uh, probably just unprepared uh, for something that was novel, something that all of us did not, um, uh, um, did not know how to deal with. So there's a lot of fundamentals that you actually realize that you have to uh, tick the boxes on as far as this is concerned. One, you have to allay the fear of your staff, of, of all those that are actually uh, uh, are working with you. So you have people who are panicking, who believe that they probably um, are in a, in a position in which they are either affected or infected. And secondly, you have to assure your uh, stakeholders that you are actually you know, geared with your BCP processes uh, uh, to uh, be a going concern and to have the capacity of continuously delivering the products and the service that they require, even if you are not uh, uh, physically open in as far as uh, uh, you know, your infrastructure or architecture is concerned. So, so that is extremely difficult. And then the second thing is that you, I mean, the third thing is that you, uh, um, uh, have this new reality that we are again talking about where staff are working from home. All of us are working from home. So if half my staff are working from Chitungwisa, from Kwazana, from Mufakose, some from Borodo, wherever they are working from, uh, uh, you know, you have to deal with the realities of connectivity. You have to, to deal with the realities of motivation. You have to deal with the reality of how do you actually ensure that the team is continuously delivering on the objectives that you have set for themselves because you can't monitor them. You don't know whether they are, you know, even spending half the day in their pajamas or in their boxes. We have all seen various videos, right, of people doing conference calls like this when they are wearing a shirt, then they are wearing boxes at the bottom and then there are all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mistakes that happen when you're going to the bathroom, things like that, or things <laughs> that we actually have had to deal with as far as the reality of, of uh, adjusting our mentality of wanting in, in, in making sure that uh, you increase, maybe not increase, but maintain productivity, maintain engagement of the organization. Because remember, we still have our objectives to meet. And those objectives have to be met whether there is a crisis uh, um, or not. So, so it's been extremely difficult, of course, for us to see how we can adopt as an organization to this. But I can say that uh, 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 one of the things that we have uh, decided that we needed to do was to establish an effective way of communicating with all our stakeholders, both internal and external. And we established what we call the COVID crisis committee. And that committee has been responsible for disseminating information to staff 
where we can, and also disseminating information to our stakeholders on the interventions that we are making. But one of the things that I absolutely like that, that, that we did, and um, I like to, to, to uh, break and, and say that I am an avid runner, but I, uh, at Bexleyden, if I were to use a, a biblical term, I did Bexleyden very, very badly because I was traveling way too much. Mm. But uh, during lockdown, I actually found the stamina to start running again. So I'm running more, I'm exercising more, I'm working more, I'm talking more on, on calls like this. I actually feel like my productivity during lockdown has been probably 10 times much, much better than it has been uh, uh, before. And I can tell you that for a fact, both on a personal, uh, um, on a personal basis and also on a business basis. You are a very healthy guy. Yes, good. Uh, we, we've managed to, to do quite a number of incredible projects that, that I believe that would have taken us much, much longer to execute had we not been uh, um, in lockdown. So, so uh, uh, in my view, and, and to wrap up your, 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 your question, it's an issue of how we are tuning our mentality to respond to the reality that, 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 that we are uh, faced with right now. You, um, you mentioned, I mean, I, I've got a similar you know, story about how we you know, how you manage a team and, um, you know, um, from, from remotely. Uh, but I mean, in your experience, I mean, how are you managing the team that you work with, uh, especially given that someone lives in Budiriro, someone lives in Bordel, someone lives all over and, you know, Shavani, wherever they live. H how are you doing that? Uh, and and how, how, how is it the, the staff responding to, to this, uh, especially right now? Uh, it, it, it was extremely difficult at the start. I don't want to give the impression that it is any easier now. Uh, but one of the most important things uh, um, uh, 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 that, that you need to do here is to increase your level of engagement and your level of communication. If anything, it's actually better for, for, for you to over communicate. I can, I can, uh, I'm, I'm telling you that. Uh, uh, you see, this is what we talked about, right? When, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. On a, a course like this, that there is all sorts of things that that's, that's going to happen. But um, um, again, going back to the question that you asked, uh, it's, it's um, important that we increase the way that we communicate because people react in the absence of information. Uh, people are going to fill in the gaps themselves and they're going to do what they believe is best for them. Uh, whether they are, you know, uh, um, um, connected to your vision two weeks ago, uh, you, you just need to make sure that you are giving people direction. And the best way to do so is to communicate. So, so we've, we've done quite a lot, really, in uh, doing a couple of things that, that we believe increase, increase uh, engagement, connection, and also for, for people to, to realize that they are still part of a great, greater team and that, that if they need something, they can um, uh, uh, call on us. Two, two, or two or three quick things that I can leave you as examples of some of the things that, that we do. The one that I absolutely love is uh, a, um, a, a virtual run uh, that we do every Thursday as a team. We started that internally, actually. So okay. we do a virtual run as a Bank ABC team. I'm involved in the virtual run as well. So we have a competition where we are running uh, five kilometers all at the same time. <laughs> Over different uh, uh, time terms and, and, and stuff like that, but but that, that is just an example of some of the things that we wanted to do so that we are keeping fit, we are keeping engaged, and we are keeping motivating each other to live a healthy uh, a healthy lifestyle. But we would not have done that before. We would have probably wanted to congregate somewhere, right, for us to run. But right now, because we are all interconnected because of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the way. The, because of uh, uh, um, you know um, uh, uh, platforms and the way that we are interacting uh, um, is now on various um, on various uh, platforms and on, on, on various uh, apps. So 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 that, that that that's one example. The the, the second thing of, uh, is that that we've also done is uh, every quarter we um, have something that we call a town hall in which I get all my stuff together in a room and just uh, uh, talk to them, give them an update on um, some of the things that we're doing. For the first time, we've done our town hall virtually. So we found, we've created a platform in which I uh, am connected uh, through Workplace to all the team, and then they have the opportunity to answer and address uh, uh, um, issues that are pertinent to them. Again, this is um, an adoption.
that, 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 that would not have done had we not uh, find, found ourselves in this uh, uh, new reality. And I also do communicate quite a lot with the staff through what we call a newsletter every so often, just again to give them idea, thoughts, process on some, some of the things that uh, uh, um, uh, we are doing uh, uh, at the center. But, but I, I absolutely believe, like I said before, that uh, um, an increase in communication and engagement and just getting people to feel like they are still part of a bigger, uh, a bigger cause and a bigger team is absolutely key. Somebody said to me, and I'm going to leave uh, this to you as a thought, that if you make your boss realize lockdown or loan lockdown, that he doesn't need you, then you do not have a job. Because mm -hmm. uh, 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 if I, can do, uh, you know, if, if I can achieve and perform all my functions during lockdown without the need of uh, two or three people who support me, why do I need those people once lockdown is done? So mm. do, 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 don't, don't put yourself in a situation in which your boss or whoever you report to, or whoever you're connected to, uh, find themselves in a position in which they have to reevaluate whether they need you going forward or not. This is actually a, a point or a, 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 an area where we need to step up, show our relevance, show our adaptability actually, and show that we are uh, uh, good for whatever we are engaged uh, um, for in whatever organizations that we represent. Yeah, someone just uh, made a comment here just to speak to what you're saying, say many bosses are realizing that they don't need some people. Uh, top managers are at risk. Uh, so that's a very interesting point that you've raised there. Um, so, you know, you know, people speak about uh, adapt or die as, as a cliche, and I've often spoken about it myself. Um, uh, I, mean, I remember a few years ago, I spoke about this at uh, a press um, club, the press club in Mutare, and I, I was talking about 263 chat and, and, and how we've come into the market and, and how mainstream media needed to adapt or die. Um, you know, I mean, what are some of the things, I mean, how, how can entrepreneurs and business leaders navigate the challenges presented by, by this you know, pandemic? I mean, it's not, it's not going away tomorrow or next week or next month. I mean, it's certainly going to be here with us for, for, for the foreseeable future. I mean, how can people navigate this, uh, these murky waters? Uh, you, you know, uh, um, um, you, you, you raise a very, very important point. And, and, and uh, uh, many that have interacted with me know that I'm extremely passionate about digitization. I'm also in, extremely passionate about innovation and really making sure that we are looking at different ways of doing business. In fact, I have said on many, many platforms that, uh, uh, you know, the way we are structured and some of the changes that we are seeing and experiencing as a world economy is changing. And the way that we are interfaced with products and with services is changing. So what COVID has simply done is, is to accelerate this process of digitization. Now I was saying again yesterday to a platform I was speaking at that uh, you know, the, the greatest chief digital uh, uh, you know, officer right now in all companies is COVID. So all of us are actually responding to the things that we're seeing as far as COVID is concerned, not necessarily because we are structured because we want to, but because we've been forced to change. Uh, uh, if you look at the businesses that have made money, and I, I was uh, uh, I'm asking a question on my social media platforms on Twitter in particular, asking some entrepreneurs on how businesses affected them. And, and uh, uh, you, you might have seen uh, that there was um, somebody who made the comment uh, um, that my business has actually been uh, uh, booming under COVID. And because they are in an e-learning uh, um, environment where most of the business that they are offering is um, are being offered um, uh, um, online, right? So, so, so there are some businesses that are actually, you know, uh, making money and that are growing in leaps and bounds because of COVID. There are also some businesses that are struggling because of COVID. So it depends on how you have structured your business or how you are actually responding to um, some of the things that um, uh, uh, you know we, we're seeing as a reality. Uh, I was being reminded yesterday, again going back to one of my favorite example of uh, uh, where we are as a as a uh, um, uh, as a world economy, of the changes that has happened between now and, and between February and now. On a little company that we referred to earlier, which is Zoom, which is where we're having our meeting right now, 
sometime in February um, up to now, Zoom has experienced a 50% increase in, uh, uh, um, in, in their market capitalization, now at close to $50 billion. Uh, um, and, 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 you know, my, my, my team always are, are quick to remind me that in the market capitalization of $50 billion for, for Zoom, compare that with the market capitalization of all the airlines in the US, I'm sure you've heard this cliche, mm -hmm. at $36 billion, Zoom is worth more than all the airlines, including Delta Airlines, put together. You know, uh, you know, if you look at some of the login stats that are coming through on Zoom, for example, having close to 300 million daily meetings that are held every day mm -hmm. during lockdown, Microsoft Teams, which is what we also use, having close to 200 million daily meeting participants on Teams alone. So if you're looking at that Niger and, and seeing where the traffic is going, where we had maybe you know, a million people traveling uh, um, through Delta Airlines, South African Airways and everybody else, everybody else is competing where? On Zoom. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, when, when you see Zoom then actually capitalizing on this and becoming one of the most valuable companies because they've structured themselves right and they're responding to the reality that, they have, uh, that, 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 that they are faced with. And if you then take that uh, uh, back home and give an example of uh, uh, F. Mara, who responded to me on Twitter and saying that I'm an, an e-commerce developer, I, mm. I, I, I develop e-learning platforms and my business has actually grown, this is what he said, that with six years solid experience in this, but my, my business is actually boomed, is has experienced exponential growth during COVID. And an entrepreneur like that would wish for what? increase lockdown. They would wish for this to continue a little bit more because they are seeing that their business has actually responded to some of the things that are realities on the ground. A few other examples that you know on, in, in the streets that we know that we all frequent is Kudamusa Siwa, for example, is business fresh in a box. No, no, nobody would actually fathom the reality of the fact that you could buy your vegetables with an e-learning, sorry, with, with, with an e-commerce platform such as Fresh in a Box. Because the first thing that we think of when we want fresh vegetables is we either go to Mbari, we go to a boot somewhere on the side of the road, or we go into a shop to buy it. But it's now a reality that you can buy your fresh vegetables through Kuda and this enterprise. And, and look at how it's grown and some of the changes that, that, that we have seen. So it's okay for us to talk about Zoom, but it's, we also just need to make sure that we are granularizing this, taking it home, so that we, 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 we're making it a reality of some of the businesses that have responded to this crisis we have seen. And have actually started to see incredible growth, not necessarily because of anything else, but because they've set themselves up in a way that is responding to the realities that we're facing. That's a very interesting point you've raised there. Um, and I can, I can definitely relate to that um, uh, as 263 chat. Um, We've, we've got a, a product called the e-paper and you're now starting to see, you know, hear that phrase, e-paper, e-paper. We've been doing this since 2017 and all of a sudden uh, newspapers, you know, can't, you can't sell the physical copy or it's harder mm. to sell the physical copy. And we've been sending our e-paper uh, via WhatsApp to uh, some 42,000 subscribers. So I can, I can, I can definitely relate to, to Kuda's experience. Um, and of course, you know, when, when people are sitting at home or wherever they are, uh, you know, on, on, under lockdown, you need information. You want to know what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah. So it, this, this, this situation has presented opportunities for a variety of businesses, um, which then bring me to my, to my next question. Um, as, a, as, a, as a leader, I mean, what, what new skills um, have, you, have you acquired or have you learned or have you, you know, the way you think, I mean, how, how different is it now compared to, you know, pre-COVID? Um, you know, you... I, can, I can tell you one, and uh, you're not going to like it, but I have a, a primary school teacher because <laughs> I am... <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> that is certainly one, one, one reality and one skill that I can tell you that I am going to come out of this with. But um, uh, they, 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 there's also a lot of things that, that we, we definitely have had to, uh, to adjust to uh, Nigel in as far as our thoughts um, um, process and our skills are concerned. It's really just um, uh, thinking a bit uh, differently with the way that we are structured, the way that we think, the way that we deliver meetings, the way we actually uh, are technologically adept. 
there is um, a little up that, um, in, in fact, the, the, the other skill might not necessarily relate to me. I don't have an account, but what, one of the other uh, greatest skill that has come out of COVID is that all of us are now comedians, right? All of us, are, or, or a number of us are on TikTok or are doing Facebook Lives and others are delivering, you know, uh, um, what, what, what do we call it, Karakumba, phase one, lockdown, <laughs> phase two, and stuff like that. We have learned that you can have a virtual con conference and a virtual party. The other day, my team surprised me and, and uh, uh, we had um, our first virtual party with our clients. It wasn't virtual. It, it wasn't uh, uh, in a physical room. But what we did is that uh, the team sent, you know, uh, in fact, it was a virtual bride. So they sent uh, little drinks and uh, packs of meat to the guys, to their various homes, a number of customers that, that we wanted to appreciate. We were in one locality and we hired a DJ. He was um, somewhere, not even in the same place that we were in. And we had a good time for one hour. So I, I, I could not even have thought that that is something that was a reality, something that, 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 that they could do. But uh, uh, you, you, you could see that uh, the changes that we are experiencing this particular season really just requires us to think differently. And if anything, I think one of the greatest skills that all of us are coming out of this uh, uh, with is just the capacity of us to think differently and to look at uh, what we are faced with. Press the reset button and see how can we actually deliver the same product that we were delivering before, just uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in a way that is probably more efficient, much, much faster, and also much, much cheaper uh, that, that, than we were doing before. So, so, so I, I think that that, that uh, capacity of thinking digitally is something that has been forced upon us. And, and I, I, I certainly appreciate the fact that uh, this has been thrust on us. Um, I know you and I are, are leaders of uh, our different organizations, and obviously yours is a much bigger organization than mine. So I want to speak to people who are probably at my level with, you know, you know our SME type businesses. I mean, um, what, what uh, you, you know, how should a, a leader at sort of our level, you know, see how should they... Um, what should they take away from, from something like this? I mean, it's very easy for a leader of an SME to think, ah, you know what, my business is, uh, is going to die. I mean, like you, you mentioned it earlier, you know, there's some SMEs that uh, are clearly not going to survive, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so what sort of attitude should the, should, 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 should the business owner have um, right now? Uh, what advice? Nigel, stop, stop, stop being a pretender at, hum at, at, at humility. You have done well with 263. Um, you know, your, your organization is by no means any, anything that is small. We commend you for the work that you've been doing in the media. In fact, in disrupting the media space for many, many years. So, so it's well, well done for that. Uh, but important question that, that you raise on SMEs and how I believe that uh, uh, we, we, we can react for that. And the, the, the reality, of course, is that a number of SMEs, even big businesses, are going to struggle. Uh, it's important that we uh, do a couple of things. And the first one, of course, I believe that is important is uh, a, a process that I call transformation through a crisis. That is something that, that we all have to do. We, we all have to in, introspect and look at um, uh, um, the, the way that we are structured. If we have to, to right size, you have to right size. If you have to right size to survive, that's, that's what you have to do. It's always very regrettable when people have to lose jobs. They, uh, my recommendation at any given point, if you're a business leader, is try and keep people as much as possible because uh, we have to lead through empathy. That is absolutely key. So if you can carry the cost for a little bit longer, please do so. The uh, uh, my second and most important thing for SMEs, of course, is to look for a little bit of funding. There's a bit of funding going on in a um, um, number of posts, number of areas, uh, um, whether through the authorities or through uh, concessions that are, that are being made. Uh, is something that I would recommend. If you are borrowed or geared through a financial institution, ask for some sort of um, uh, 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 you know, holiday restructuring of your facility, just so that you give yourself a bit of breathing space, again, uh, uh, to carry you through um, your, your, your most um, uh, difficult months. All of us are going to have extremely uncomfortable and difficult months um, uh, going forward. It's also important that we look at our product set 
as SMEs, whatever you are delivering, I can assure you can be delivered in a way that is smarter, that is more efficient, and that cut costs as much as possible. So cost cutting is again something that I believe that all of us have to do. Whether you're a small business or you're a big business, when you're faced with a crisis, you need to make sure that you're counting the pennies as much as possible so that you are reducing your overheads and just carrying um, the things that you believe are critical uh, for your survival. So, so, so I would encourage uh, every business to introspect, look at um, uh, those things that you believe that you can defer for now. It's also important that um, uh, uh, whilst we are deferring, uh, the fifth thing that I would like to leave, particularly with um, um, SMEs, is the most dangerous time for you to fold your hands is during a crisis, mm -hmm. because growth in many instances actually happened during a crisis. So, so whilst you're re re right sizing and doing the things that, that uh, uh, we, we, we talked about, it's important that we are looking at some of the opportunities that actually exist because there is lockdown. So if your business does not work because there is lockdown, you don't look to, do, to look at uh, where the opportunities are for you to deliver that same product or that same service, uh, either virtually, either using a digital platform. Just, just look at your product set just a little bit differently and see what you can do uh, uh, to, to deliver your product or your service a bit uh, uh, differently. It's very important that we invest during a crisis. And I know it sounds like a contradiction to what I was saying before, but when you right size and you're cutting your costs, you should focus on how do I actually position myself so that when there's an upturn, I'm actually the business to go to. Or I'm the one that is uh, um, available uh, really for people in the consciousness of uh, uh, people's minds. And that's certainly what we've been doing because we didn't want to fold our hands. That's why we've been coming off the box, launching Branch X, launching our mobile app, launching all these things here. It's not necessarily because we are smarter. It's just because we want to position ourselves for the future. And because we, 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 when, when we have the uptime that, that we believe that we will, this is where we believe that we will have built enough critical mass to take us to the next level. So, so during a crisis, always make sure that you're repositioning yourself uh, to be uh, ready uh, for uh, a new business that is likely to, or that will certainly come when the uh, situation has um, uh, surpassed. The last thing, of course, that I want to leave with uh, entrepreneurs uh, and SMEs who are listening is that it's important when you're doing a process of transformation to match two things, people and technology for you to deliver your product and your service uh, differently. All businesses right now in 2020 have to be technology companies first before you provide whatever service that you provide. Whether it's a newspaper, whether it's banking, whether it's a, a fresh in a box, whatever you are doing, whatever you are selling, you need to think yourself as a technology company first and then see how you can kind of deliver your product and your service more efficiently using the technology platform uh, uh, and not necessarily concentrate on the service you're offering. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, I hope uh, those uh, obviously listening uh, and uh, the participants in the room are, are taking note of that. I mean, I've, I've been writing some notes uh, quietly here. Um, I would like to now bring in the, the, the rest of the, uh, the community. I'm looking at the time. I know you're a busy person and it's a Friday. Um, are there any questions for, for Doc, guys? Um, anyone um, got any questions? Uh, please unmute yourself and then obviously ask your question. Keep it short and then mute yourself right after so that Doc can, can then respond. Um, just while someone is, you know, some people are thinking about a couple of uh, comments here. Uh, there's someone, someone's joined in, you know, they're talking about technology. Someone's joined in, Kumbira is joined in from Berlin. Thanks to COVID, we can attend these uh, uh, events virtually from across the world. Let's embrace digitalization and take advantage of the opportunities available. Um, you know, there's a comment here with the crisis comes opportunity. I'm into real estate and you can't uh, manage to be technologically uh, savvy. I think that's uh, what you have. To, I think that, that's what the comment reads there. Um, yeah, we're, we're running down time. So yeah, let's open up the questions. Anyone got a question? For Doc? Yes, no? Hello, <coughs> Hello Nigel. Hi. Hi, uh, Kumbira here. Uh, thank you. Hi, Doc. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the presentation. Uh, thank you. I, my question is uh, because uh, I work for AfroLink. We also work in the startup ecosystem in Africa. And because of the uh, COVID crisis, it's been very difficult 
to reassure startups, entrepreneurs, in terms of uh, things will get better, number one. Number two, in terms of even telling them that growth will uh, take place during a crisis. Because not only are they facing challenges in terms of uh, running their businesses, but they're actually facing challenges in terms of taking care of their own selves in their own homes. And I know it's also different from, the, from Europe per se or in America, whereby there are a lot of grants and a lot of uh, advantages for the SMEs through government intervention. How else can we really help entrepreneurs practically in terms of getting them over the line during this COVID situation? Good question, Kumbrai. Uh, um, I, I think that that question should be more directed to government officials than to me. I just run an institution. But I'll give you some of my thoughts um, on, on, on what we believe that is key and important uh, for us to do. And, and I've, I've spoken about this very, very publicly as well uh, because I absolutely believe in it. Uh, I think that uh, the bailout is important. It's very, very important that, that, that we bail out SMEs because I, I can tell you, Kumbrai, you're absolutely right. Entrepreneurs are going to struggle. SMEs are going to struggle. And we were saying this uh, 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 in passing, but I, um, can tell you with certainty that uh, by the time this crisis is over, one of the greatest strategies that we are going to face is probably the economic Armageddon that is going to follow. Uh, forget the, 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 the lockdown, forget the crisis, and what we've been doing is, is extremely important to save lives. But this is actually a, 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 a very, very difficult choice. You, 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 you're trying to balance two uh, very difficult realities. One is preserving lives, and secondly, is preserving you know, livelihoods uh, because of the economic conditions that, 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 that are going to pursue. It's expected that um, uh, you know, we, we, we are actually entering a global recession. And also expected that uh, this recession that we are going to face worldwide is going to be much worse than any other recession that, that we have faced uh, um, in, in, as a global village. And, and um, Sub-Saharan Africa, as you know, so expected to contract more than 4%, Zimbabwe West, and stuff like that. So, so it's a reality that we have to face together. And I can tell you there is going to be a lot of pain for big corporations. There's going to be a lot of pain for entrepreneurs. Uh, we've already seen it, and I, and I don't want need to give you examples of what we have seen in that in Dubai alone, it's expected that about 60, 70% of SMEs or businesses is going to close. SAA, we know, is on the brink. It was on the, in the brink even, even before. We know that a number of airlines are actually shutting. We know tourism organizations directly impacted are going to shut. And are going to close, and and so 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 the reality is uh, we cannot do this here without looking at how we can support each other. It's worse for a country such as ours because we were already a fragmenting uh, um, and an economy that was in distress, as you know. But we need to look at some of the things that we can practically do. And uh, um, um, the first uh, point, of course, is the bailout. It's important. The government has announced that there is a bailout available, 18 billion of it that is being distributed through the banking sector in various areas. If, you, if uh, the SMEs and the entrepreneurs can be a part of that, I recommend that you look at uh, you know, financial uh, you know, uh, players and advisors who can assist you to access it if you can. The second thing that we have recommended, uh, of course, to the authorities is that we need to have some sort of uh, interest rate cut. Of course, I see that uh, because we are managing our other realities, uh, particularly a runaway exchange rate, that the uh, decision has gone the other way, which is an increase in interest rate. But, but ideally, when you have businesses that are struggling, what you actually need to, uh, uh, to do is to provide that extra relief because you can't offer proper money, right? Uh, like SA has done, you can't offer proper money. So the best thing that you can do is to reduce the burden of uh, the current uh, uh, financial structure of that business. And the best way of doing so is um, uh, uh, to, to offer an interest rate reduction. The third thing that I've, uh, I've, I've recommended is that we need to properly reschedule loans. So if you are an SME and you are borrowed and you are geared, let's extend your loan for about a year or so, or two years, legally so that you are having a little bit of a breather over this period whilst you are recovering your, your, your revenues. We can't do that legally right now because if I were to do so, then I am affecting 
uh, um, a greater ecosystem of the loan structure, including the NPO ratios that are, uh, 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 or, or the default rates that are uh, measured by the central bank. So, so it's some of these little things that I think we need to look at our toolbox and see what can we practically do to um, assist uh, the, the SMEs that are, that are in business right now. Just because we're not offering money does not mean that we can't offer financial interventions that allow people to breathe just a little bit more. So, so uh, yes, there's going to be pain. Yes, there's going to be uh, a lot of headwind um, ahead, not only for Zimbabwe, there's going to be pain for, 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 for all of us in various spheres. Even in our households, my recommendation is that let's cut down on uh, those things that you don't particularly need as much as possible, and then focus on the things that you need. Uh, and, and preserve as much of your value as possible. And then secondly, if we can right size, let's try and right size as much as possible. Let's try and look at where the opportunities are. Uh, I, you know, I, I like um, uh, the, the shift that we've seen there. there uh, um, a, a group of entrepreneurs that I actually call, you know, the, um, the COVID entrepreneurs. That is entrepreneurs who are looking at the opportunities that exist right now because of COVID. And they are pushing themselves, well, we, we, not everybody can supply PPE equipment, right? But there are many other things that are available that can allow you to respond to some of the things that we are doing through, uh, through COVID. It's not necessarily important for every entrepreneur to rush through that as a business model, but we need to make sure that we are realigning our businesses really into the, some of the things that we are seeing as the new realities right now, because uh, uh, money follow, follows opportunity. And I believe that even in our deepest crisis right now, we also have the potential of um, having some of our greatest opportunities. Yes, uh, any other questions? Um, I hope that was, Wilfred? Uh, got, yep. Wilfred? Wilfred, yep. Yes, go. Uh, thank you, Nigel. Thank you, Doc, for such a, a wonderful presentation. We're learning a lot. Uh, I also wanted to ask something, uh, beside the government intervention of which the doc talked about, is there anything that uh, the bank is doing uh, to assist uh, the, uh, ask the SMEs in these difficult moments? So um, I'm a new client, I'm just, just about two months old. I moved from another financial institute to Bank ABC and I'm, I'm really enjoying. What exactly are we doing as a bank doc to assist uh, the SMEs beside what the government is, is trying to put across? Thank you. Thank you, Wilfred, and welcome to the A team. Uh, if you haven't joined us, if you joined us already, what time and when are you joining us? We hope that uh, after that webinar, you will become a part of the uh, Bank ABC family. But uh, 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 Wilfred, an important question. Uh, before we ask uh, uh, the government, in fact, my um, uh, quick answer to, to your question is that uh, uh, sometimes we ask government to assist on a reality that we know that they have no capacity to assist. And I can tell you that uh, um, in this instance, yes, we are asking for 18 billion or they've offered 18 billion uh, uh, as a rescue package. I know that it is financial engineering. Some of it is not going to come in money. We know the reality of where we are uh, really as a, as a country, that the, 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 uh, whatever would have been put down as a package is probably not going to come into your pocket as 18 billion or as proper liquidity. So those are some of the, the, the realities that, that, that we have had to face. And some of the things that we thought that we would do that is within our capabilities as, as, as bank ABC is to, you know, one, and, and I'm, I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about information. I think that money usually is a problem if there is no education or if there is no information. If you didn't know that there's a process of risk, uh, uh, loan rescheduling, you would not have done it if you had a loan. You probably would have struggling and suffering by yourself. So, so one of the critical things that I um, uh, have always uh, recommended that we do is to provide as much information, as much platforms as possible so that we are disseminating information like this. We might not necessarily be the one that is offering you the grant or offering you the, uh, the position. But if we can connect you to people that we believe that can assist your business to respond to some of the challenges that we're facing, we are available to do so. So we are connected to quite a number of funds, a number of individuals, a number of uh, uh, organizations that are providing uh, 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 liquidity in various areas actually for companies that are in distress. 
Yes. And that is the job of the, the team who are here, Oliver, uh, 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 and his team in business banking, to look at some of these uh, realities and see where we can help who help. I'm not saying that we are available to help everybody. We are, we are available to just listen and where we believe that we can connect you uh, to the help if we can help ourselves. That's one of the things that, that, that we really, really would like to do. We've, we've taken a view as well, secondly, Wilfred, on uh, a number of sectors that we know that have been hit the hardest, and the tourism sector is, is, is one of them. And, and we've uh, quite a number of uh, our customers within the, the, the tourism sector. In fact, just before lockdown, we assisted a company or a business in Victoria Falls that uh, was um, uh, building a top-end a, a, a top hotel uh, that had just, just completed. So the, the, the hotel was completed in um, uh, uh, January. Lockdown happened in February. And we had offered them a loan. So uh, now, now, now imagine you have taken millions from the bank. Your expected payback period is February. And you have zero tourist arrivals. And you had expected your entire revenue to be, uh, to be uh, uh, provided from uh, um, you know, your, your tourist arrival. What do you do? What do you do in an environment like that? If you're sitting in my chair, you know that the loan is due and you also know that you have a business that has been affected by an act of God, by, by really a process that is beyond their, their, their control. That's why I said earlier, that as business people, what we need to do is that you know that we, we, is, is actually to be at a point where we are leading with empathy, right? Where we are actually looking at some of these sectors and then crafting uh, you know, responses that are tailor-made to some of the realities that we see. I can do two things. I can either lead that hotel into bankruptcy because I've been so inflexible in the way that I uh, am responding to their need, or I can assist them to reschedule so that they can emerge out of this crisis a little bit stronger. So, so, so uh, um, it's important. Uh, it's important that we are looking at um, uh, some of these things, some of these realities, and look at how we can. Um, a kind, kind of change ourselves to uh, uh, providing assistance where it's needed, whether it's a sectoral approach or whether it is uh, uh, um, uh, based on the individuals that, that, that we are, uh, are dealing with. Those are some of the little things that we have been uh, um, um, uh, doing and responding with uh, over uh, various sectors. Obviously, I can't mention all of them, but Oliver and his team are here in the event that you need just a little bit more guidance and assistance on some of the things that we can do together if you, if you need it. Uh, just a, is a quick, just if I could just intervene, there was a quick question here. Has the incubation center been functional during the lockdown? Is it open or is it, is it operating online? Oliver or Blessmo, do you want to answer that? I can, I can take that. For starters, yes, in terms of the fiscal space, we have actually adjusted to the new reality which does not allow us to work within confined spaces. So yes, the fiscal space might be closed at the moment, but otherwise, in terms of how we are operating this webinar that we are actually having at the moment, it is being run by the Mission Hub. And secondly, we have also reached out to partners, and I'm happy to see that Kumbi um, is joining us all the way from Germany. We are already in discussions with them so that we can also avail other solutions to our um, entrepreneurs that are out there. Thirdly, we also know for, an, for a business, it is very important that you get an opportunity to sell a product. And it's also important that you get an opportunity to get the right supply for the product. So as Bank ABC, we have uh, created a place where you can sell your goods for free, and we call that the Ignition Marketplace. And lastly, we are also available when you need advice, when you need to discuss about banking, when you need to discuss anything generally, how you can take to business banking uh, business forward, we are also available for you. Thank you, over to you, Nigel. Great. Uh, there's a quick. Any any other questions from the uh, community, the audience? I saw. Is it Ephraim who had something to say? Anyone else? Nope. Yeah. Is it Russell? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. Go, Go ahead. Yeah, yes, uh, I'm, I'm Russell Stam from Chronicles Properties. Uh, Doc mentioned something about uh, creating a more sectorial approach and uh, 
I, as one of the listed practitioners, would like to mention something about uh, uh, something like uh, technologically savvy environment that we have so far. Because in the real estate industry, we have uh, augmented reality, we have automated valuation models, and we can see that in Zimbabwe, a lot of real estate practitioners are lagging behind in that uh, in that spectrum. So, what uh, is the Bank ABC? is a financial institution doing to support the real estate uh, market. Maybe if we can uh, have a more uh, clarified uh, explanation in that sector. So thank you, thank you, important question, but I can't help you disrupt your own market. I think if you have a model that you believe that works in the real, in the um, uh, um, uh, we state sector that is meant to disrupt the market. We are here to listen. What we understand is money. We don't understand buildings. You understand real estate. And, and if you are coming to us and say that I have a model that I believe that is truly innovative. In fact, I always said, like to save us so money follows a good idea, not the other way around. In many instances, we tend to think that uh, we need money to start a business. We don't. We need an idea to start a business. So if you have the idea that you believe is truly innovative in your sector, something that you want to come to us uh, to look at, who we'll always look at it. There's nobody who will ever refuse uh, to support an idea which clearly has value or something that we believe that is going to create uh, uh, you know, uh, um, the kind of disruption that, 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 that you're looking for. Uh, um, specifically, of course, in real estate, we, we're very, very active in supporting uh, um, uh, real estate development. In fact, uh, uh, we, we, we support um, uh, quite, quite a number of uh, developments, whether it's on the commercial side or it's also on the uh, um, uh, individual mortgages. Of course, we are faced with a, a very, very difficult environment right now where we have rampaging inflation uh, at about 780. So it's very, very difficult right now for us to be offered mortgages, but we are we're constantly reassessing uh, that, 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 that position. But my call to you, Russell, is that if you have you know, an idea that you believe that is uh, uh, truly uh, innovative and something that can disrupt the market, we're willing to listen to it. Great. Uh, one, uh, we've got a question here from Ephraim. It says, does, uh, Doc, does the bank have any facility for cattle farming business with the intention of running an abattoir with the capacity to slaughter 200 uh, plus cattle? The bank has an uh, appetite to support, support any business that requires money, as long as we can make money from it. <laughs> That's a quick, short answer. I like it. Um, any other comments or questions? Any other comments and questions uh, from, from the community? We've got uh, participants. Yep, any other questions, guys? Hello, I Nigel. There's a yep. question from, from Lloyd. If you, I'm, I'm not sure if you're able to see it. Uh, Lloyd. Uh, right, let me have a look here. No, I, I, uh, has he sent it to me? Uh, can I see it? I can't seem to. Oh, yeah, Lloyd. Yeah. Um, thank you. Very insightful presentation. My question, insurance industry is uh, at threat, is, is, is obviously being threatened at the moment. What's your advice, uh, what's your word of advice to us as an up, uh, upcoming young professional to survive this pandemic, bearing in mind that people are not mobile, social distancing, etc., etc. et cetera, et cetera. How best can we deliver, retain talent and remain operational? That's a big, big question there, Doc. Very difficult for the insurance industry, Lloyd. Uh, I um, have been asking myself why I have been paying medical aid. Now, just giving you an example, of course, of one type of in, in insurance, because nobody's accepting it. Um, and and, and um, um, uh, that, that, that's the same thing with trying to insure your car in an environment and forget COVID. Just look at some of the setup that we have as an economy and some of the imbalances that we have uh, between earning capabilities and also the inflation that we are suffering uh, when you want to claim a service. So, so um, the, 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 the reality, of course, uh, a low is, and, and, I, and I say this respectfully, but without, without any apology. I believe that um, any business, Lloyd, that is based on a subscription model is going to fail. In fact, it's a business of the past. 
no matter what that business is. Whether it's a, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a, a terrestrial TV, whether you are DSTV or you are an insurance business or you are a, you know, you know, paper subscription business of any kind, those businesses, I think, are built on the business model of the past. And the reason I say so is because, you know, the, the mentality of the human being right now is that they want service on demand that is cheaper and they want service uh, um, that, 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 is, that is effective for what they are looking for. So the question is, why should I pay subscription to DSTV uh, at $80 a month for movies that I probably do not have the capacity to select myself if I can Netflix it and select a movie that I want and watch what I want at that particular time? I ask you the same thing for, 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 for the insurance business. Why must I pay, you know, whatever amount? In fact, I was trying to insure uh, um, um, a car as well. And I think I, I actually ended up doing it. And then I'm, I'm a CEO of a bank. I ended up insuring my car for third party because I thought that the pricing, this is one of my private cars, that the price was ridiculous. And also that I couldn't afford it. But, but uh, yes, there is the replacement value of all these things that, that you guys calculate and build into, in, in, into this model. But when people are struggling in as far as their earning capabilities are concerned and they are ravaged by um, uh, uh, inflation, it actually gives you an opportunity for you to look at the insurance model as it is, innovate around it, and actually see how do we actually deliver the same product and service when I need it. Uh, and not necessarily tie me down to a contract that I might not necessarily need or require at a particular time. So, so, so I believe that, uh, and, and this is my personal view, that any business that is built on a subscription model is, is outdated because uh, you know, it, it's very difficult right now for you to contain, to contain a customer. You know, the future, in, in the future, nobody is going to own the customer, but insurance companies want to own the customer for a duration of whatever you have paid your premium. Same thing with DSTV. DSTV wants to contain and control the customer for a period or duration of my subscription. But I want the flexibility of accessing a product and a service when I need it. And not necessarily because I'm tied down to some sort of subscription or something that I might not need with the hope that in future I might need it. You know, the, the, the mentality of human beings right now is that we are popcorn people. We, we have popcorn mentalities. We have, we, we have popcorn requirements. I, I need something today but tomorrow I might not need it. You know, I, you know we, we're, such, we're so, such spoiled for choice that you know, we, are, we are so confused by choice that you know, what I need today, I might not necessarily need tomorrow. In fact, we, we're now at a point where our reality is, is that you, know, you wake up one morning and you like this thing and then the next morning you don't like it anymore. But, but, but you know, and, and that flexibility of changing and moving into a, a various environment is something that you need to build in your thought process. Uh, ourselves to provide uh, a service on demand. And, 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 and I, it's the same thing for banking. Uh, and and I, again, I say this because I absolutely believe in it. Any bank that is making their revenue on the fact that they are going to charge you, you know, a monthly service fee, as we call it, is actually a bank of the past. Because you are tying me to an account and hoping that because I've kept my money for a month, I'm going to, 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 to charge you, you know, a, a monthly service fee uh, for, for keeping my own money. How about you charge me for what I'm using my money for and not necessarily because you have kept it into something that is an account that you created. So, so, so I, I think our thought process in how we are offering everything that we offer in particular, uh, um, you know, the, the business that, 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 that we need to kind of move, move towards is looking at everything we provide as if it's a service. And we're offering it as a service that is required by an individual, by a customer, at the point that they need it. And not necessarily at the point you believe that they are going to need it at. And I think if we change that mentality, we are going to align ourselves to the new reality, not only of COVID, of where we are going in our uh, um, thinking process as a consumer and also as a customer. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, look, we, I know you don't, we don't uh, this was meant to be an hour, we're just, just slightly over an hour. Uh, there's lots of, a uh, couple of comments here about wanting to partner with you guys and various, there's a comment here from Pablo. Uh, he's in the tourism sector. He wants to partner with you guys. 
Uh, there's someone else, uh, Kasani, I think it is, who's speaking about uh, partnering with you guys. Um, um, obviously, all your contact details are online, and, and I'm sure Blissmore and the team can help. Uh, just one last quick uh, question for you, Doc, before we, we, we call this, uh, uh, we close this, this, uh, this, this uh, meeting. Um, for anyone who's thinking of quitting right now, because right now is a really good time, given everything. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, we're in a very dark place, uh, I guess, the rest of the world, you know. It, om it almost feels like the end, of the, world, the end of the world is coming really, you know, soon, next week, next month. What would you say to someone who's considering quitting? You know what, um, um, uh, all of us um, uh, get tired, um, uh, um, Nigel, and, and I, I need to, 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 to make sure that we are uh, putting it in the, in, in the open. All of us get tired, and all of us really look at uh, some of the challenges that we have, whether in the way that we are structured in our families, in our homes, and in, uh, in our businesses, and, and just because it's so hard sometimes to maintain you know, the, the reality or some of the things that we are seeing, uh, um, you know, some of the frustrations that we are, uh, are faced with as, uh, um, as, as, as businesses. But the most important thing really that, that I would like to leave with uh, everybody who is here, that it's important that we are looking at business, not necessarily from the point of view of what we want to deliver, but from the point of view of, of what we can deliver to the customer. I always say that uh, any greatest challenge actually presents itself with the greatest opportunities. And I also believe that anything really can be disruptive if you just think just slightly uh, uh, long enough. And, and, I, and I know that the difference between um, anybody thinking of quitting and somebody else just continuing is um, uh, very, very thin. But there's no business that has been established that has been successful that has not pushed through or has succeeded out of perseverance. If anything, I believe that one of the most important qualities for any entrepreneur, hard work, perseverance, focus, connection, and really just making sure that we are sharing ideas and you know, uh, moving in the same direction and supporting each other. If, if anything, we establish this um, uh, 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 Ignition Hub with one purpose, and that purpose is to make sure that we are providing a platform where we are having dissemination of information as we are doing right now, sharing knowledge and making sure that we are connecting it as like minds as Zimbabweans, and that we are not wearing ourselves down by our negativity, but we are building each other by our positivity. Thank you guys for having me this afternoon. This has been an incredible session. And I absolutely learned a lot as well from interacting with you from your questions and from your uh, moderation, Nigel. And, uh, uh, you guys have been a great sport. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And, um, thank you so much, Nigel. Thank you, everyone, for coming through. We shared our product details within the comment section. Please, uh, let's discuss, let's talk, uh, and let's keep the businesses running. Let me just wish everyone a pleasant afternoon today. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.